If you're just tuning in, you're watching a live webcast with Mr. Lyndon LaRouche. Um, Mr. LaRouche has completed his opening remarks. Now, I will say, uh, before introducing our first questioner, much of what you just addressed is being addressed by the leadership of Russia. And uh, as we announced last week, you know, the missile tests of the nuclear triad uh, that were presided over by Vladimir Putin, also statements that were made by a leading member of the United Russia Party, uh, Yevgeny Fyodorov, which really, who says, look, these scattered wars around the world that have been building, building, building for years are heading in the direction of the inevitability of World War III. Mm -hmm which was exactly what you addressed in what you just referenced, Storm Over Asia in 1999. And this is exactly the context for uh, what we now see breathing down our, our necks in terms of a thermonuclear uh, conflict. Now, uh, we're going to have a short exchange back and forth with two members of the audience that are here. Uh, and I would like to ask Leandra Bernstein to come to the podium. I'd like to ask you a question in the context of the last presidential debate, the debate on foreign policy, and uh, raise your attention and our audience's attention to uh, a recent report, a report that just came out today from Fox News on uh, exactly what was known and what was occurring over the course of approximately six and a half hours when the U.S. Embassy was attacked in Benghazi. And essentially what had, what had happened is that a CIA team had been told three times by their superiors, by their higher-ups, to stand down and not to uh, rush to the aid of, of the um, members inside, inside our embassy. Mm -hmm. Told three times uh, when they requested permission. Uh, when they uh, and then against orders, uh, the members of this team went to the consulate to evacuate our our ambassadors, looking for, of course, Ambassador Stevens, who they didn't find until until later. They had requested between 9 p.m. and 12 midnight. They had requested help, but there was none. No Spectre gunships. There was a drone, a survey drone that was flying overhead over throughout the course of this entire incident that was basically live streaming footage to anybody who had the security clearance inside the United States, including the White House Situation Room. No special, op no special operations came. So uh, it, that, that report just came out and so this is this is within the context of a continuing debate concerning what American influence and power should be in the world today. Uh, there was uh, some reference in the presidential debates to our role as nation builders. Obama referenced our role as as nation builders. Uh, perhaps we could take the example of Iraq which is currently embroiled in a civil war between Shiites and, and Sunnis. Or maybe Libya, where this fiasco has occurred and is continuing to uh, yield very rotten fruit. Or maybe in Syria, where there is a civil war, where Syrian rebels are now uh, armed with stinger missiles, which, oddly enough, have uh, made in America are, well, are made in America. And how about our nation building in Afghanistan? Maybe based on the, on the role of Great Britain in the 1840s, Great Britain in the 1870s, USSR in the 1970s and 1980s. So, uh, with, with that being said, uh, there was, there was also, I'd like to bring to your attention a statement by uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski on the Charlie Rose show uh, just this past Tuesday, which was very, very interesting, especially considering who he is. Uh, 
uh, what he his role has been historically, where he warned on this show of the consequences of arming rebel groups in the Middle East, looking at the consequences of arming of arming these rebels and saying uh, explicitly uh, not to listen to Britain and France, not to assume that Saudi Arabia is our friend in this situation, and saying we should we should be working closely with Russia and China, in particular on the Syria question, uh, toward a, a workable solution, not just dictating the policy as we all come to the table. So I'd like, I'd like to ask you, because it is the most relevant foreign policy question, what, given, given the world situation today and our unique role as the United States. What is, what is the appropriate role that we should have in this context in international relations? Well, first of all, we should fire Obama and Susan Rice, who were the leaders in the lies which were spread from that administration by Susan Rice during a whole series of days, where she lied one day after the other about what had happened where the White House uh, uh, press corps was misinformed in the same way. And now it's all clear that Obama himself knew everything from the beginning, within a matter of hours. And he was therefore lying all the way through. Now a man who lies about general warfare, and this was a part of general warfare, is actually a criminal. That president is a criminal. He's committed many other crimes. He's caused starvation. He's caused deaths as a result of starvation and similar kinds of additions. We no longer have a food supply of, uh, anymore because of his policies. But, but these things are all tied together with a grand plan, which starts essentially with the assassination of John F. Kennedy. If, if you look at the figures, the actual figures, what the economy really is, not what the bunk is, that we have actually, since the assassination of John F. Kennedy, the U.S. economy has been on a consistent, not, not regular, not uh, so forth, but consistent, a consistent decline. We now have actually about 27 million people who could be considered, if the rules were kept straight, would be uh, needing jobs. And we don't, it won't help much just to give people jobs. You, you may do it for, as an emergency measure, as Roosevelt did during the 1920s, but the intention was not to get, keep these kinds of lackluster jobs for people, but to keep them alive and keep them in place and located you know, so that we could build up the economy. And what saved the United States from being defeated by Hitler and it was the United States that stopped Hitler, uh, Russia also, but they all played parts. But the United States was crucial. It's when Winston Churchill, who uh, was disgusted with his fellows there in Britain, who had been kissing the butt of Hitler all the way through, the British were the actual leading, these people were the leading supporters of the Hitler campaign. They also the president of France, or the, was the same kind of thing. Same thing, and that's what De Gaulle came out with his operation against precisely this. So it was things like the De, Gaulle, the De Gaulle's campaign, his insurgency, and the United States, Roosevelt in particular, which even before the United States was involved in the war, was taking steps knowing that the Hitler thing is dangerous and we've got to stop it. So we with Russia stopped Hitler. And Russia was already in it before we went into the war formally. And what we've got now is a case in which the current president of the United States and the policies of the Anglo-American policy, which are essentially the NATO policies, are of exactly of this nature. The whole thing is a stinking fraud. And that's what, that's what you have to understand in this case. Now, now to the case of Brzezinski, the gentleman with whom I'm much acquainted, I never actually shook hands with him, but I'm very well acquainted with him from the 19th from my period back in the 1970s and so forth. Now, it's quite a turnabout. That I understand the turnabout. Because Brzezinski was a lackey. 
That's the way to understand it. That is not a lackey of ice, you know, in the ordinary sense, but a lackey in the sense that rather than operating on his own instincts, he was following a recipe which was dictated to him by circumstance, and which he didn't have to be told, actually, you do this. He was understood that if he, the way he was going to get ahead and keep ahead was to play the game that was predicted to, to him to play. And so he was the key who set into motion some terrible things that happened in Central Asia, one of his accomplishments. Now, he did all this on the presumption that the United States was involved in a war to destroy the Soviet Union. So therefore, and similar kinds of things were brought into consideration later. So what happened is that he, in that phase, was a lackey for that process. Now, being an old Christian of Polish ancestry and so forth, he now looks at the world and says, look, that time is over. There no longer is a Soviet Union to worry about. There are no longer these other kinds of things. I'm an old man. I'm a Catholic. I'm a devoted Christian. Huh? And in my, t in my time, as I'm reaching the terminal state of my life, what am I going to do with the remainder of my life? And therefore, you have a case in which somebody who has acted like a reprobate from the stand, from our, looking in from the outside, and you find them they're coming out with a completely different policy. It's their own policy for a change. An old man who's not going to go out of this world without getting some, taking some honor with him.